Hey guys, we're here again today at Hard Racing. Today we're going to do clutch products. Uh, we've got a few products that kind of all tie together as far as since you're already inside the clutch, might as well swap them out. So we're going to do this Kotako cover here along with a few other products we'll show you in a minute. This clutch cover has got some really, really nice benefits. As you can see from the outside, it's got a sight glass like no, most motorcycles have these days, so no more dipstick, which is really nice. It's got external oil ports to run a oil cooler the proper way. This thing is specifically set up to run an oil cooler. So if you want to run one, whether you have a like Finbro big bore kit or just stock trim and you want to cool the bike down, you can run oil ports um, to your oil cooler. Very nice bonus. Another huge bonus is a cartridge oil filter. Now if you're not familiar with how the stock setup works, it's kind of like a washing machine and it's got this uh, spinner inside there that it flings the oil against it just like a washing machine flings your dirty clothes against the side to get the, the grunge out. Well it's the same way this thing works in the stock trim. Well inside that oil spinner it accumulates all your debris and it's also got a little screen on the bottom that accumulates some debris there. It's a really, really old school method of cleaning your oil. It works, but it's just not the easiest uh, to deal with. And cleaning it, you have to pull the whole cover off, and it's just kind of a pain in the butt. And this now will allow you just to swap out this cartridge filter out of here. Take about two minutes. And these cartridge filters are readily available at your local Honda dealer or Amazon about five six dollars so it's a lot better I mean just the gasket kit to swap this thing out and the spinner every single time the old school way would be about eleven bucks so right there it's half the price and it's ten times easier and you'll see this in a, in a few minutes and uh, the last big bonus of this cover it replaces your spinner and again that's a uh, you'll see it shortly in the video but in the back of it normally it would go right there instead that rod there and the filter cartridge the place where the spinner was and what that does is it reduces a big chunk of weight off of the rotating mass of your crank as far as the engine rpms um, will uh, rev up a little faster um, and just make it feel more peppy better throttle response because you have less mass on the end of the crankshaft so We'll show all that stuff here shortly and go over how it installs. And we're also going to install the billet spring plate. And basically, when you do stiffer springs in your clutch to make it not slip, the stock one, which is cast, has a tendency to break once in a while. These little ends of them will break and that's not good if that breaks while it's inside your bike give some serious uh, engine damage so instead we switched to a billet version which is a whole bunch stronger it's uh, machined out and we'll show you how to install that as well as the springs pretty much anything in the clutch is going to be gone over in this video We're also going to be installing this Takigawa Super Oil Pump. It puts out 30 to 40 percent more flow than the stock one. It's wider. It's stronger. So that will be another part we're going to be doing since we're already in the clutch. And it's very inexpensive for the great pluses that you get out of having more oil flow to your motor and if you're going to do an oil cooler in our minds this is a must because the stock oil pump is moderate at best so the flow through an oil cooler is limited whereas when you get the higher flow oil pump then you get a much better performance out of your oil cooler all right, so first step is to warm up your motor. Doesn't have to be screaming hot, but just warm it up a little bit. And then go ahead and drain your oil. 
and a nice easy way to drain the oil. You can use aluminum foil or a baggie like we did here, a uh, soft pack. You can get these from post office or FedEx. Um, anything that basically routes the oil over your header so that way it doesn't drip all over it because when you drip oil all over your headers and you start it up it smokes and stinks and it's a pain in the butt so you can use aluminum foil soft pack FedEx or postal or even um, they have some really cool online Amazon uh, oil uh, rerouter trays made out of silicone so once you get your oil drained properly and it stops dripping go ahead and put your drain plug back in preferably with a new crush washer tighten it up and then we'll pull off the engine uh, clutch cover and while you're waiting for the oil to stop dripping you can go ahead and cut this part of your oil dipstick off you will no longer be needing this piece per the instructions so all you have to do is just take some snippers and just cut it off and this is what you will be left with. Okay, so now that the oil is done draining, we are going to torque the drain plug down to 18 foot-pounds. Okay, so next we are going to remove all of the cover bolts. So before you remove your bolts, it'd be a good idea to have a piece of aluminum foil wrapped around your headers because there will be oil that drips out of from the cover once you remove the bolts. So you just want to make sure you have a piece of aluminum foil wrapped around the header and then don't forget your catch pan. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is take and remove this bracket. Um, what you want to do is push on the bracket and it'll allow you to push on the cable and release it off of the actuator, just like so. Okay, and as per the instructions, what you want to do next is to snip off the tab, which is on this little spark plug wire holder, and you just snip it off with the, just a pair of snippers. Okay, so to remove your clutch cover, it's going to be a tight fit because there, is two, there are two dowels to hold it in place so that it doesn't shift. So you want to put your hand, um, your left hand, right here on um, this hole to give it a good grip. And then take something rubber and just tap on it to loosen it up. So if you're lucky, all the gasket cover will be right, I'm sorry, the gasket will actually be right here on your cover and not in pieces on the other side. And if you're not so lucky and you have pieces of the gasket on this side, you just want to make sure that it gets cleaned off because it needs to be completely removed off of this side as well. As you can see, silver is all you need to, to see. Okay, so the next step is going to be remove your filter screen. Inspect it, make sure there's no big metal chunks in it, clean it, and you want to reinstall it. Yep, you want to reinstall this filter screen. Just make sure you do that. And I know you guys are asking why we need to reinstall this. It's because the instructions say we need to, and it's something where it's just an extra backup system. So. So just to review, just this is right here, the oil spinner, big chunk of metal, it's going to go away. So that big chunk of metal will go away. Right behind it is the oil pump. It's going to get replaced with a high flow oil pump. And next we have the clutch basket. Also in there are the clutch plates. And this is the clutch spring plate. And behind that are the clutch springs. So the next thing we're going to do is remove this oil spinner. Now when you're trying to remove these bolts, it's going to want to rotate. So what we um, suggest is you can either use an impact wrench 
or you can use this uh, handy flywheel clutch tool. And what it does, it keeps it immobilized and keeps it from rotating while you're actually trying to remove the bolts. Um, it's also a multi-purpose tool because it can go on anything round. So you can use it on spinners, you can use it on clutch baskets, you can use it on flywheels. So we've got it on our spinner so that we can remove the bolts and keep it from rotating and uh, get it taken off. And that's the inside of your spinner. So now you thoroughly clean everything inside the spinner. So now we've just completed our Honda recommended oil change. Everything that we've done up to this point is what you have to do when you change the oil on your Honda Grom. In addition to that, it is recommended to change your spinner gasket and your clutch gasket. Those two together are approximately about $11. And the beauty of this cover is that you don't have to do any of this any longer. Okay, so the next step is we need to remove this oil spinner. So there's a couple different ways um, that you can do it. Uh, some guys have taken a hole punch and just gone in and given it a good tap to release that. Um, the second, uh, guys have used, the Honda actually makes a specific tool that just fits in there perfect and you can take it off that way. That's the easiest and best way. Um, the third way is some guys can have actually taken a socket and dremeled out these teeth on it to get it to fit. So those are your three different ways. We are going to use the Honda recommended tool for this. And this is the part number for the Honda recommended tool. So this big chunk of metal now comes off and goes away. And it's a weight savings of two, two pounds, four ounces. That's, that's actually really, really big. And that's rotating mass coming off your crankshaft. Next, you install the collar with the nut facing out. And second is going to be the washer with the outside facing out. Okay, so the next step is you've got this capture nut and it's really important. It has also a little small O-ring and there's a groove inside at the end of this capture nut, but it's on the inside and that's where your O-ring goes. So very carefully, you need to fit that O-ring into that special groove for the O-ring. And once it's in there, also take a little bit of oil on your finger and just wipe that against the o-ring um, once it's in place. So then we're going to take this capture nut once we've installed the o-ring, put it on the shaft, and being careful not to cut or move the o-ring. And one word of advice as you're installing this capture nut, just be very very careful because you don't want to dislodge that o-ring so you need to, as you're pushing forward, you want to go um, left and right just smoothly and that way it'll slide easier along the shaft. So next we're going to torque this nut to 47 foot-pounds. So next we're going to remove the stock oil pump and all that takes is just removing these three bolts right here. And just on a side note, this is an extra step that we are doing. You don't have to do that when you swap out the clutch cover, but since we already have this open and the clutch cover off, we are going to go ahead and replace it with the Takagawa um, oil, super oil pump. So once 
you get the bolts off, just go ahead and remove the oil pump. And also make sure you remove the two, two dowel pins and replace them with the longer ones that come in the kit with the super oil pump to accommodate the wider, the, the wider oil pump. So this next step is personal preference, but we went ahead and primed it and put oil in the oil pump. And to do that, if you choose to do so, you just put the oil in this hole right here and spin this part until you see the oil come out this hole. And then that should be good enough. So the next step is installing the oil pump. And you just wanna be very careful that when you do install it to line the teeth up properly and correctly, so that they don't misalign and you break something off. So just be very, very careful and put it on properly. So next is to go ahead and install the bolts. Okay, so the next step is to torque these evenly. The bolts, just like you do with car tires, I mean, sorry, wheels, um, and you're gonna do the torque to nine foot-pounds. And that's it for the oil pump. That's how quick and easy that is to do. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is remove the clutch plate and the springs. And we need to remove these three bolts. And when you do remove them, you will want to remove them equally so that, the, that they do not bind. Okay, so these are only set at nine foot-pounds, so it's pretty easy to unscrew them. You just put one hand, your left hand, firmly on the clutch basket and then turn the wrench with the other. And remember, as I said, back out each bolt equally. Okay, now that you've got the spring plate removed, you can see the difference between the billet version and the stock one. The stock one being cast, of course. So at this point, there's a couple different things you can do. You can install EVC heavy duty clutch springs, which are stronger than stock. Uh, these are about, I believe, nine, uh, nine to 10 bucks. And the second, you can put the aftermarket billet clutch plate much better than stock. As we said, the stock one is cast aluminum. This one is a billet aluminum. It's a stronger aluminum. Or the other thing you can do is install new clutch plates uh, if they were worn out and all you'd have to do is take the tool that we used earlier, flip it around and the smaller side actually fits right on to remove that center part. But our clutch is fine, so today we're just going to install the heavy duty springs and the billet aluminum clutch plate. So next you want to transfer the bearing from the old plate to the new plate like we have done here. And make sure when you press this bearing in, you need to press it all the way in until it bottoms out. Okay, so now we have our billet spring plate and the HD clutch springs installed. Now what you want to do is tighten each bolt evenly. Do not tighten one all the way down and then move on to the next one. You want to tighten them evenly. Quick note, just make sure your springs are lined inside the tabs. You just want to make sure all your springs are aligned properly inside each tab. Okay, so now that we've got each bolt snug, we are going to go and torque each one to nine foot-pounds. 
So the next thing you want to do is install the clutch actuator from the old one, installing it on the new one. To do that, you want to turn it. You would release the plunger, put it on, put the uh, actuator on the new clutch cover, insert the actuator, and then turn it, and then put the plunger in until you feel it lock into place. And be sure to put a little bit of oil in there before you install the new plunger. And there's this little bushing on your old cover. When you go to install the new cover, you do not use this bushing. So just make sure that that bushing is either in your old cover and not in your motor. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do before we install the cover is make sure you've got your two dowel pins installed right here. And then also wipe down any excess oil, grime, anything before we install the gasket and the cover. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do before we install the cover is to put the gasket on. And you wanna do this with a little bit of efficiency because you wanna make sure to get it before um, you have any uh, oil leak out. Okay, so once you have your cover aligned on the dowel pins, you wanna give it a good smack with your fist just to make sure everything seats properly. So now you wanna install all of your bolts and make sure before you tighten them down that your gasket has not shifted and is not pinched. Just make sure everything is aligned and then you can tighten your bolts down. Okay, and remember for this one, you're gonna put the spark plug wire bracket on before you put the bolt on. Okay, on this one, don't forget to put in your clutch cable into the clutch actuator arm and then put the top bolt in. Okay, and we're gonna to torque these down to seven foot-pounds. Just make sure that when you do torque them, you want to crisscross just like you do a car. And this is Kotako's oil cooler. That's specifically made to work with Kotako Big Bore Kit or the Kotako clutch cover that we carry. It's all nice uh, hardware, mounts directly up to a stock Grom head or a Finbro head. It'll work with either one. Anything that uses stock, tap it covers. Because that's where it mounts to is the tap it covers. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is install the rubber grommets in the bracket. Okay, next you want to remove your stock tappet cover. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is remove this O-ring from your stock tappet cover and then install it on the new tappet cover. Okay, so note there's two tappet covers that come with the kit. One that has two holes in it, another one that has fins. The one with the two holes goes on top, the one with the fins will go on the bottom. So you're going to use the supplied socket bolts to install the top tappet cover. Okay, and these get torqued to nine foot-pounds. Next, you're going to take this little metal, you've got four little metal inserts, and you're going to insert it into the rubber bushing. I've already got three of them done. Here's the last one. Okay, so to prepare the bracket, um, we're going to take a longer bolt, put a washer on it, slide it into the bracket, and then you're also going to take another washer then and slide that on the bolt.
just like so. So as you can see, these pieces right here look like this looks like it's identical on both sides. However, this has a lip on this side. This is actually what the bracket's going to bolt into. Okay, next we're going to take our bracket with the bolts and spacers and we are going to bolt it upright, this piece up. So next you're going to put the flat top bolts through the top part of the bracket and then the washers on the back side. And then you mount it to the tappet cover. All right, and once you've got your cooler installed, the last step is to install the lines. Okay, so now what you wanna do is take one of the banjo fittings, install it in the line, then take your hose clamp and tighten it down, and then determine where you wanna route the line. And when it comes to routing the line, it's totally personal preference. It just all comes down to where you want to route it and that's it. So when it comes to installing the banjo bolts, you, whether it's on the cooler or whether it's on the cover, you want to have one washer on the top and one washer on the bottom. So as you can see, we cut our lines, assembled the fittings on the end of the lines with the hose clamps, and here's our final result. Very uh, important thing to point out is don't tighten it down until you've got everything situated where you want it. Then you can, because you may want to align the hose a certain way, reroute it, um, and as you know with the crush washers, those are a one-time deal. So once it's cranked down, you would have to swap out your crush, get a new crush washer. So just do not tighten it down completely until you get everything situated. So very important, the last thing is to fill your bike with oil, but you wanna let it idle for a few minutes. Very, very important to do this so that you can inspect everything thoroughly to make sure there are no oil leaks. Inspect your fittings, inspect your bolts, inspect your cover, inspect everything to make sure there are no oil leaks. So do not go out for a ride immediately after starting your bike. You wanna let it idle to make sure everything um, is working properly and there are no leaks. So if you're adding a super oil cooler after the fact, you want to make sure to note that this actually takes a little bit more oil. So just make sure to, to notice that you'll need to fill it with a little bit more oil. So just watch your site class all right so we finished up the video we got the oil cooler we got the oil cover uh, clutch cover with the oil ports we did the super oil pump uh, HD springs and the billet uh, spring plate all of these we offer at hardracing.com and we're always here to help any questions or anything you need help with uh, information um, just give us a holler, email us, or give us a phone call. We'll get you taken care of.